today we're going to do a video all about highlighting and contouring blush bronzer and highlighting your face. First I'm going to get my damp beauty blenders wet and squeeze out all the water that way they're ready to go. Half of my face on the left is going to be drugstore, the right is going to be high end. I'll keep reminding you throughout the video. I'm also going to be showing you the products that I'm using and give you a comparison while I'm telling you what to do. A lot of the drugstore products that I chose were very similar. I do think the high end are definitely the more quality choice, but definitely super similar um, feels throughout the whole video as you can see. I already have on my foundation, though before you cream contour, bronze, and highlight, you also can do your foundation over top of that if you prefer a really natural look. First we are going to correct though. I like to use something either peachy or pink. I've really been into the pink tones lately. If you are a deeper skin tone than me, you're really going to want to make sure that you use something that's more peach to orange depending on how deep you are. Only conceal under your eyes are correct if you really have dark circles or darkness. I have a lot of blue under there that if I do not correct before I highlight, my under eyes will look very ashy throughout the day or kind of gray. So if you have the same problem, then I would definitely check out either using a peach, pink, or orange concealer. Just because you use orange in your medium skin tone doesn't mean it's going to correct any better than using a peach. You also want to make sure that this is typically darker than your skin but I have found that the pink tones really do correct um, I really also like the erase paste in the number two medium even though it is darker than my skin tone when my dark circles are really bad it really helps to correct I like to use my ring finger to press in the product before we move on to highlighting there are plenty of ways you can highlight your face though I like to use a really pigmented concealer I actually really like both of these. I really love this Tarte Shape Tape, but as I was using the Dream Touch Lumi Concealer by Maybelline again, I realized how great it was, and it's a great drugstore concealer. It's really just a great concealer in general. So for highlighting, there's a couple places that you can highlight. I like to keep my highlight close to make my cheeks pop. You want to use highlighting in any places where you want your cheeks or face to be emphasized, you want it to be bigger, brought forward, you want it to be enlarged, anything that you want to be emphasized you want to highlight. So I like to keep my highlighting close underneath my eyes to really make my cheekbones pop. I also don't pull it out too far because if you have a wide face already, pulling it out to your temple is going to make it wider. However, if you have a narrow face, that's really going to be good. I also like to highlight under my contour line that I'm going to be putting because that's really going to make my cheekbones pop as well. I like to do a U on my forehead because that's going to lift my brows and balance the whole look out. And I also like to do an upside down U on the chin because for some reason this looks so much better than the X. Um, a lot of people just do an X on their chin and kind of like put it on sloppy which is what I used to do but I found that this little upside down U just looks so much prettier. I don't know why but I just feel like it's worth highlighting your chin. I'm going in with my damp beauty blender and I'm just going to press this product into the skin. You don't want the beauty blender to be so wet that it's like wet on your skin like taking away the product you just want it to feel cool and use soft patting motions to press this concealer into your skin. Now when you're choosing your concealer shade, you can do it one to three shades lighter to your skin tone. I like to make my concealer pretty bright because I really like how it really makes my features stand out. My face can look very flat, so by using a lighter concealer, it's really going to make everything pop. Though if you don't want to do that, you want to look a more, little bit more natural, just use like one shade lighter than your skin tone and it will look a lot more even. So you just want to keep patting this on your skin until all the product is pressed in. We are going to be going over this several times, so don't worry if it doesn't look completely blended right now. Now we're going to move on to cream contouring. I love cream contour products and I was actually really impressed by the colors at the drugstore. So there's something to consider when you're choosing your contour color. You can either do something cool, which is to the left, or something a little more neutral. 
You can also do something warm. I don't prefer to do that in like a cream product. I like to keep mine more neutral to cool. The fairer you are, the cooler you typically want to go with your contour color. And the um, deeper your skin tone gets, so the more tan, you can go a little bit warmer. I prefer to contour under my cheekbones to really make them pop. I like to round out the contour under my cheekbones instead of just doing a straight diagonal line. You also want to make sure that you're contouring from the tip of your ear down to your lip, though I like to stop kind of at the corner of my eye as you can see here. I also like to do the jawline. You can do under your jawline or right on the side. That's going to make it look a lot sharper. I also do contour my nose with a cream today. I prefer just doing a powder, though I wanted to show you how to do everything today. So I did contour my nose with cream, though I prefer just doing it with a powder. It's a lot easier and it looks a lot nicer and more natural. So when blending out your contours, you want to make sure that you're blending in the direction you want your face to be lifted. So my cheekbones, I don't want them to droop down anymore, so I'm going to blend the contour up. My face, I want to bring it kind of um, forward and make it look more structured, so I'm going to blend the contour down. Also my jawline, I'm going to blend that down because we don't want to blend it up. We want to sharpen it underneath and make it look like underneath is more structured. So with the nose, I'm also blending this down, and I also am going to use my finger to blend it out slightly. I do, again, prefer something cool on the nose. I have always um, seen that on your nose, it will pull warm no matter what color you're using. It typically will pull more warm even if you can use it on your face. I also contoured under my lip today just a little bit, and I'm blending that out. This is going to make your lips look poutier. I also recommend doing the popsicle lip technique. This always makes my lips so much bigger. And as you can see, the difference between one side contoured and one side not, you can see my cheekbones just really stand out. Next, I'm going to be using this contour color that's a lot cooler. And it's okay if it's a little bit cool at first because we are going to be going over with a cream bronzer. Now don't be confused with bronzers and contours. Contours again are used to make things look slimmer, chiseled, pushed back, where bronzers used to warm up the face. Bronzer is kind of like blush's sister. Those two are kind of together and contouring is more to sculpt and highlighting is more for um, emphasizing. So that way you do not use a really orange powder or a really orange cream that's going to look muddy on your skin. Some people, if you pull more yellow in your skin or have a warm undertone, you can get away with a warmer contour because your skin is a lot warmer. Again, that's why if you're typically more fair, you want to go cooler because you typically have more pink undertones. And if you are fair and you even if you have yellow undertones, that warmth is going to look very muddy on you very quickly. So if you are deeper, you just want to make sure that you use something warmer so it doesn't look ashy. Also, we're going to keep blending over this several times throughout the whole video, as you will see. And I just wanted to mention a quick tip for anyone who has really deep skin tone. It can be very frustrating when you cannot find a contour color that's actually going to show up on you. So just like we use our highlighted highlighter underneath our cheekbones to emphasize them, that is something you can do to use your own skin as your contour emphasize them by highlighting underneath and it is going to look so stunning. Trust me, it is beautiful. Next we're going to move on to baking. So first you're going to need a pan, then you're going to get out your favorite baking mix. I only use one egg, but I got two. So first you're going to crack your egg, make sure you wash your hands afterwards before moving on to the next step. Then you're going to use a cup of pancake mix, super yummy. Then you're going to dump your baking mix into the pan. After this, you're going to grab some vegetable oil, you'll need about one tablespoon and pour that in. Then you're going to mix it all together and then you'll be done. <laughs> That is not the kind of baking we want to do. So we want to take our damp beauty sponge. I'm using the Beauty Blender and the Kat Von D translucent powder. You want to make sure it's really damp and pick up a generous amount of powder. You're wanting to set your face with this because baking is all about putting a ton of powder on your skin so that the heat cannot escape. And when the heat can't escape, it's literally baking the powder with your skin and the heat that's coming off of your body. This is going to make your makeup say all 
all day and I personally think that your makeup looks the most flawless when you do this. For the everyday woman, if you just want to do this under your eye where you put concealer, this is not going to make it crease and it's going to stay all day. I also like to put it under my contour to really make it pop as well as where I have smile lines. I find that this helps with creasing. Also, I have a wrinkly forehead so I also like to put some powder on that. But I'm also going to be showing you just how you can take just normal powder and set your face. This is the NYX HD powder and it's just pure silica. There is no talc in it. It's just a pure silica powder. I noticed that this powder really grips onto your brush so you only need a little bit and I'm just sweeping over all of the places where we concealed. And then we're going to, if you feel like it is too powdery where you just put on the powder, you can also take your damp beauty blender and press that in, but not where you baked. You want to leave that on for about 10 minutes. Now we're going to be moving on to cream bronzer. I am personally a huge fan of cream bronzer. This looks beautiful, especially if you feel like your contour is looking a little bit too cool. By layering a cream bronzer over it, it's going to warm it up and really make it all melt into your skin and look a part of your face. So I'm using the Chanel bronzer this is my absolute favorite every woman needs this in their collection or man whoever you are you just need this it is so beautiful it's very pricey though it's so worth it um, it just melts into the skin is the most beautiful thing ever I do think that this airbrush makeup from Sally Hansen is very similar when you are bronzing you want to make sure you just warm up the face so I like to do over my contour night not directly where you contour but just over it higher kind of like where you would put blush I also like to go over the forehead I don't like to use creams over my nose when I'm bronzing you do not want to put this under your jawline because that's only where you want to contour and that's really only where I put bronzer you can dust a little bit over your chin but I like to focus it on the upper half of my face just to warm it up Again, we're taking a damp beauty sponge just to blend everything in. This is a great trick. I constantly am going back over my makeup with a damp beauty sponge to blend everything out. You can go over this with powders, creams. But before we start powders, you want to make sure that you set your creams. I'm going over this with just a translucent powder. Either one will do. And then you can begin your powders. So first I'm going to contour because this is the most harsh. So then we're going to be topping a bronzer on top so it looks more natural. So this is the e.l.f. contour powder and the Hoola bronzer powder I'll be using. I personally really love the Hoola bronzer. You can get the mini one for $15. It is worth the splurge. It is the most amazing contour powder ever. I like to use this just lightly right under where you contour right under those cheekbones, on the side of my face and temples. I'll also put a little bit under the jawline and also the nose. This is what I prefer to contour my nose with. It never looks too warm, it's the perfect color. And then I am going to be doing the same steps on the other side. You can just bring the contour down slightly before the corner of your eye or you can bring it down a little bit more. It's a personal preference depending on how dramatic you want your contour to be. Again, we're also going to be putting that on the nose, along the jawline, and also underneath the lips. You can skip the creams if you want and just do the powders. You just want to make sure that you set all your creams before you do your powders so that nothing sticks and you don't get any weird patchiness. So again, we are blending this under the jawline before we bronze. Bronze is really going to help to melt everything together to blend the contour in with the skin and the bronzer. So bronzing today, you want to use it just to warm up your face. Again, on the cheeks, I kind of put it where I put blush over the contour and then where you put the blush. That way it really melts into the skin. I also like to use it around the forehead to give me some warmth. Again, you do not want to use it under your jawline and you also can use it on your body to give you a little tan in the summer if you haven't been outside a lot. As you can see, these two bronzers look very similar on the face. 
Next is blush. There's two places where I like to apply brush. On the apples of your cheeks and back towards the temple. If you just apply the blush on the back of your temples, it's going to make your face look more pulled back, a little more slim. If you put it just on the apples of your cheek, it's going to make your face look more round and it can even make you look older. It's actually a stage trick is to put um, blush on just on the apples of the cheek and it can do both effects. So I like to do just a pop on the apples of the cheeks just to make them look big and then pull the blush back. That's going to give you the best of both worlds. Depending on your face shape, you want to play around with what blush looks best for you. Next is highlighter. This is such a huge thing right now and I personally like it. I think it looks very beautiful but I'm also doing it very intense. So if you don't want to do this as intense you don't have to put a cream underneath. That's really going to make your highlighter pop. Also you can spray your brush after you run it through your highlighter. You can spray it with like a setting spray. That's going to make it more metallic but if you don't want that you can just use Use a synthetic brush or natural hair brush is going to make it a little bit more sheen. So that's why I really like using the Anastasia Beverly Hills brush A23. So you can see these highlighters are very similar. And there are places where you want to keep your highlights specifically. I like to keep mine on the um, high points of my cheekbones. I also like to connect it with the top of my brow. I love highlighting the tip of my nose and down the bridge. I think it looks very beautiful and it really helps to give your nose a really pretty shape. And again, I'm highlighting my brows, connecting it to that highlighter on my face. If your highlighter powder is not very strong, you can take a cream, and I'm using an e.l.f. stippling brush to stipple this on my face. You're not supposed to put creams over powders, though I didn't notice that it broke up the makeup underneath with this. And just make sure you blend it out further with your fingers if it's too much like a stripe on your face. And then again with this natural hair brush, I'm putting on the highlight, and you can just see how intense it is. You can also highlight your cupid's bow, you can highlight above the brow, underneath the brow, the inner corner of the eye. Some people even highlight on their chin, but I prefer not to. Then don't forget to kick off all that baking powder. You don't want to be walking around with a ton of powder on your face, though you might see it disappearing because it is baking and blending into the skin. So you guys can tell, it looks pretty good right now, but I just want to make sure that it's further blended. And this is a trick if you feel like it's just not blended enough, how to take it to the next level. So I like to use a face powder, not a foundation powder, but not a translucent, just something in the middle. And I like to take a powder brush and run this all over the face to really blend everything together. This is going to blend the contour in, the face powder, make sure that everything's really seamless. This is also really good because if you feel like it's too harsh, it's going to blend it in, but you still have that initial contour underneath. That's still going to peek through, so your contour and highlight is still going to be chiseled, and then you're not going to lose all that hard work that you just put into contouring and highlighting your face. So I just go over this a couple times, blending everything out. Finally, we're going to use a setting spray. Not only is set our makeup to make it last the whole day, it's also going to melt all the powders into our skin. If you did your eye makeup or have wet mascara, make sure to cover your eyes. So you guys can see, both sides look pretty close. And I hope you really like this video and learned something and have a great first week back at school. Thanks for watching. Bye!